hair, makeup, good. Everything looks good. Okay, we on? We recording? Yes. We're going to get live. I think we're good. We're Rockstars, good. what is going on today? Something very special and something super informative. I am Bajan. This is Kevin Burke. Funny as well, informative, all that good stuff. <laughs> we are going to talk about what you are going to want, need, how, when, why for your first track day. Cue intro. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. Ooh. How it works? No, I'm kidding. Sometimes on Apple, that's how it works. Yeah. Are we good? I don't see a red light. Is that thing like... I need a red light if we're going to continue. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about kind of what what we would recommend uh, on a first track day, how to get started, where to go, what car to take, all of that fun stuff. Um, so let's just dive right into it. So Obviously anything. Race <laughs> anything. Race everything. So yeah, like to that end, I guess the best track car usually is the one you already have. Um, never fall into that, you know, oh, you know, I have a NA Miata, I need to get the faster ND Miata to go to the track, like, nah, -uh. The one that you have is usually going to be the cheapest and most economical to track. Exactly. Most of the time. Yeah, exactly. And, and you're going to, we'll, we'll preface this and we'll, we'll go into more detail later, but you're going to want to take your car in as stock form as possible. You're not going to want to throw a bunch of suspension components, exhaust, power adders that completely change the dynamic of your vehicle. And now you're going to either have to, you're out of your element, obviously, right. you're way out of your skill level, or you're going to have to completely relearn how to drive the car each and every time you start adding these things on. And add on where you see fit, not just because the internet tells you to do 100%. so. 100%. You know? And like, for me, when I bought the C7 Corvette, I purposely didn't go on any forums. Um, and that, that's a more modern car, so it's got a lot more like reliability, like dialed in. Of course. Um, but I didn't want to be that guy who throws monoballs on the car, you know, throws a big wing, even though we ended up doing that anyways. Uh, you want to try and take it out as stock as possible to get the hang of it. Now, some things you do need to take care of first. Of course. Uh, I know certain cars have certain Achilles heels, uh, BRZ and 86, oil coolers yep. come to mind. Uh, <laughs> really, they can be tracked bone stock, yes. but you need an oil cooler from Definitely. my understanding. I'm not a BRZ guy, yeah. you know, but I do know that much. The great thing about the S2000, which is why it's our favorite car to track, is it doesn't need hardly anything. Uh, you can go with stock radiator, stock suspension is actually really good yeah. on that car. And then even just stock wheels, just throw some you know, tires that you can make fit on there, brake pads. Uh, it can be aligned from the uh, factory, so bring it to a good shop uh, to get aligned. I recommend Rockstar Garage. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, do you have anything to add on that? No, it's um, like you said, the, the S2000 is such a capable car from yeah. the factory. I mean, there's a reason why there's such a cult following after 20 years of its release. So many dedicated shops are side dedicated to this just one car. So it's definitely a capable car. Like Kevin said, it's it's not under braked from factory. It's not under cooled from factory. The suspension is very, very well designed. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so well equipped and capable yeah. from the factory that it doesn't. it's not going to take much fluids brakes, a good set of tires, a good alignment, and you're good to go. And the S2000 has such a mass range of adjustment built in from yeah. the factory settings as well that you can almost get your suspension dialed in from factory to your driver's liking, you know, especially in the beginning stages yeah. of, of getting into tracking. So getting away from the S, because not everyone, you know, has an S2000. Of course. And especially now they're getting more expensive and, you know, all that good stuff. The most, second most important thing I would say is find a good local shop that knows what they're doing. They will guide you in the right direction if they're good and honest, and they will tell you, you know, what alignment to start off with, what tires to try, what brake pads. They can do all that stuff for you, and it's really important to try and not do everything yourself. I tried that when I first started out. <laughs> I ended up replacing almost all my parts, like two or three times, because I bought the wrong things, put it in the wrong way, it really does save you money to at least, you know, you don't need to, if you're a DIYer, you don't need to have them do everything, but buy your parts from a shop, have them guide you in the right way, especially a shop with track experience on whatever car you're going to buy. Exactly. The trial and error is definitely fun, but it definitely <laughs> yeah. get expensive. Yeah. But... Wasted track time is not <laughs> the best thing in the world. Drive four hours, you know, a whole day dedicated to it, thousands of dollars sometimes, and then you get there and it doesn't work. Absolutely. Or something breaks. So worst feeling ever, and that can kill your passion too. Yeah. Which is like the worst thing that can happen in this, because you need passion to keep doing these crazy things that we do. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so the basics, I guess, we kind of got covered. Alignment, uh, brakes, tires, maybe inspection is really important too. You know, make sure your brake lines are all in good shape if it's not a car. Like, newer cars obviously aren't going to need as much attention to detail like that. Like Kevin C7 yeah. is obviously a newer car. Right. Modern technology, you know, Cars that are much older, S2000s that are almost 20 years old, it's not that they need maintenance, but 
time yeah a time where there's all you I know. mean just today we were uh, taking out my oil filter <laughs> cap or not my oil filter my oil cap, oil cap and it actually broke off and the threads were inside of the valve but you got heat cycled a couple thousand times yeah, right. that's probably why it did that but it's neither here nor there but anything can happen so inspection is really important and make sure you don't go out and hurt yourself or others and having a good shop like Kevin mentioned it can so definitely important. help you and, and guide you and give you all the support that you're gonna need and usually shops like this that the people who work there, that the guys and gals who work there generally have either track knowledge or some experience themselves. Yeah. So they can kind of help tailor a specific setup for you. If you tell them, hey, my car is doing this or it's oversteering on throttle right. or, you know, understeering on deceleration, the, the people at your local shop, you know, like at Rockstar Garage here, we can, we can help tailor a setup to you based on your, you know. And everyone's different. There isn't one setup that works for everybody. Yeah, not one size fits all here. Yeah, it's, it's very personal and it's just individual. Like everybody has their own personalized. Process. Yeah, yeah it's a personalized setup. Uh, that's why even the factory race cars have, you know, all the adjustment because each driver might want to like change something. Exactly. Let's go into where should you go for your first track day. There I think that is one of the most important questions and probably one of the most questions that you get asked, we get asked here, I get asked. Where should I go? Where can I take my car? Yeah. So there's lots of places that you can go. And it's funny, I didn't even think about this. Thank you for the reminder. But when I first started tracking or wanted to track, I had no idea where to go. And I actually asked a few people and they never even responded. And I'll never forget that. That's why I always try and make it a point to tell as many people as possible and never leave people <laughs> hanging. But a uh, little sidetrack there. In my opinion, for a beginner environment, there's a couple of organizations. First of all, we're very blessed in Southern California. Yeah. You pick a weekend, there's a track day. <laughs> there's net 12 months out of the year. Like any weekend you want, there's a track day. Yeah. Um, I know the guys over at Speed Ventures are really good. Those were actually the guys that uh, I first started tracking with. And the cool thing about Speed Ventures is they will guide you from the very beginner, give you an instructor, show you how to safely yep. enter into the track, all the way to Time Attack series, like HTC right here. This Honda Time Attack Challenge is run actually at Speed Ventures events. So you can actually start in the beginner group and see the guys that are actually doing Time Attack, get information from them, and that honestly is the best thing you can do, yeah. is uh, learn from others. You know, don't be the guy sitting in the corner. Go out and meet people at communities where this is at and why it's such an amazing sport. Speed Ventures is actually where I started as well. Yeah. Um, Aaron, shout out to Aaron if you're still there. Thank you so much for all the help. You know, in the he's vacationing somewhere. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, but no, he's he's super helpful. He he tailors yeah. your track experience day. He checks in with you. They have download yeah. meetings where everybody has like an open forum where they discuss. So it's a very open place for somebody who's new to you know because a lot of these track events you go to like we'll talk about the other more competitive environments it's not very open sometimes you know to, to go yeah. out to different people and teams and obviously more so you know they're focused on their day and their competition but right. i feel like speed ventures like kevin was saying it's it's an open environment where you can go talk and, and learn and room to grow exactly most important room thing. To grow for sure. uh, the next one which has a very similar environment is on grid yeah. uh, where you can go with a begin with an instructor as a beginner they do i don't think it's free instruction but it's very inexpensive for what you get and they'll ride with you, make sure everything's safe, teach you the ins and outs of tracking, answer any like questions you might have. And then OnGrid also has three time attack series, Shootout, Super GT Cup, and Apex Time Attack. And all of those are fantastic series to compete in. So same kind of vibe where you can go as a beginner and yep. go all the way to time attack, yep. which is what it's, in my opinion, it's all about. That's yep. what I'm passionate about. 100%. So, and then uh, some, other, some other organizations, uh, SoCal Drivers Club, and uh, they, kind of cater to, I don't want to say like the more wealthy, but it's more expensive. Gentleman and it's driver? Almost like a pri yeah, I guess. <laughs> it's a gentleman driver. Like, you know, it's a really nice, um, no, it's, it's a really nice gig. So you go during the week, usually Thursday or Friday, yeah. and then it's open track all day and you just go out whenever. That is more towards the advanced driver or uh, like an intermediate driver with a very expensive car that maybe they don't want to share the track with a ton yeah. of uh, cars. Uh, Fast Toys Club is also similar to that, where there's two only two sessions, intermediate and advanced, very limited, uh, but it's expensive because they limit it to 40 cars. Yeah. So and, uh, if that's important to you. If you have an expensive car, you don't want to be on track with all those slow Honda S2000s. <laughs> you can uh, you can do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, and like Kevin was saying, there's there's on grid and then there's speed ventures on the side of the more novice, but there is definitely room yeah. to grow all they will the way to range. The time attack series. And then there's more competitive environments like we have up here, like V Tech Club. Yeah. In my opinion, maybe the highest amateur level you can maybe compete at until I'd you say go so. to NASA or something more semi professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are great. Those guys are great, and it's hosted by Club Racer. Uh, they're great guys, it's a really safe event. 
It is on average a little bit faster, a little more advanced as a whole. As a whole, but they do accommodate like newbies. They're Absolutely. Not turn people no, away. no, of course not. Um, but they, uh, but they're definitely like on the faster yeah. end. Well, Global Time Attack does a very, very few events a year, and That's actually had a, we just got done doing Global Time Attack yeah. two weeks ago. They want people to come that maybe aren't the pointy end because yeah. that's what pay this, pays the bills. It's yeah. important for people that aren't going out there doing 45s, 46s, 49s, 50s to go out there because they need to fill it and that's what pays for the streaming, of it pays for the red, like everything that makes yeah. them happen. So I, I wouldn't say a newbie to go there, but maybe intermediate driver sure. that wants to dip their toes in time attack, Absolutely. get a little bit of that exposure because it does help. If you want to be competitive, Whew, it's uh, it's, it's very competitive. It, it's up there, but it's a blast, and the people are great. So I don't think there's a bad, really like organization in SoCal. Maybe we can edit this part out later. I don't know, but I, <laughs> there's don't bad talk people. But there's <laughs> organizations that you know I won't name names, but they were a little bit unorganized. Um, an yeah. unorganizational track day leads to an unsafe track day. Right. And that is the last thing that you're going to want to want. Uh, oh, that you're going to want on a track day. Another thing is if you're going with an organization you've been to before, maybe you're not super familiar with, maybe they're new, always ask the question that there's going to be on site fire and safety. Yes. Because some of them will not do that. So you yeah. want to make sure, and most of them do. Most of them do. But if you go with a brand new person, you know, if it's a semi private day, if there's no fire and safety, you just got to be a little bit more careful. There's all kinds of uh, variations, I guess, of Absolutely. track days. Absolutely. But if you stay with the on grid speed ventures, club racer events, like they you're only in good hands. And trust me, like there's plenty of track time between yeah. the three of them for Southern California and Northern California. Yeah. So pick a weekend and you can go. Speed ventures is kind of like State Farm, right? Yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> Speaking of safety, I, I feel like a lot of us drivers and I guess a lot of us in general put this kind of to the side where we focus on at least at first, the important. Yeah safety aspects like tires and fluids and brakes and we get the car's safety up but we don't get our own safety, our own safety mm -hmm. in order you know things like uh, gloves shoes a racing suit a helmet Hans Hans device, device. Uh, obviously all those things are, are very expensive right. and not everybody's going to be able to afford something like that but I would just stress a very good helmet. Yeah, you can get a um, good HJC. Those are really good, good for like three hundred. Yeah. They're very bucks. well priced and and they're certified. Like that is all a, the ratings, that would be a yeah. good buy if you're looking to stay on like the lower end of the budget. Yeah. If you have a six point harness, a Hans device is one hundred percent recommended. Yeah, um, I I know personally people yeah. who have not crashed on track, but they've had an off a pretty bad off on track where the Hans device basically saved their neck you know yeah. from being from, from injury so definitely something that we would recommend but it's all very personal whatever exactly. you feel comfortable with yeah. and it, I think it's important to not knock on the the people that show up in the fire suit in like a stock car because absolutely that's, not. it's their decision absolutely not and uh, if something does go wrong anything can go wrong in any car anything can go wrong. you know a stock Corvette can catch on fire almost just as easily as like you know a modded out S2000 exactly so it, it's all it's all very personal preference but I would recommend uh, helmet, pawns, gloves, and shoes to start, and then maybe save up for a suit and pick your battles and when you want to wear it. Yeah. The the more expensive ones, I think they're in like thousand dollar range, are actually quite comfortable. Yeah. They're like wearing pajamas all day, <laughs> so they're not they're not bad. They're not bad at all. Rockstar Garage pajama race suit. <laughs> Just, Justin, I mean, are you I'd be, watching? I'd be down. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so that kind of I mean wraps it up. If you guys have any more questions, like let us know in the comments and then uh, there will be a part two of this, maybe more advanced techniques or maybe more advanced, you know, we can talk about alignment. There's so much we can talk about yeah. and I'm excited so, to yeah. work with you guys on this too. Yeah, definitely shout out in the comments below what type of content you guys want to see, what you want to see Kevin and I discuss and argue about on yeah. camera. <laughs> um, we appreciate you watching. Yeah. Thanks so much for sticking with us for today's episode. We hope you learned a lot. Um, if, you, if there's any questions you have on today's video that maybe we didn't explain correctly or you want a little bit more clarification, yeah. uh, reach out to us, DM, comment, call us, maybe show up in person and say hi if we don't have any friends. So. <laughs> Very lovely. <laughs> uh, ring that notification bell, like, comment, subscribe. Again, thank you Please. so much, Rockstars. We appreciate your support. We, we've been noticing our YouTube channel has been growing. I think we're a little over 830 subscribers right now, so yeah, thank there. you again. We appreciate that, and here's to 1,000, a million, 2 million. <laughs> One can only hope. All right, see you guys. Thanks, Rockstars.